Hi, in this session we will discuss SAP Fury security. So first of all, uh, we will look into what is security and what uh, why it is required. So let's start. So uh, we will look at the concepts related to securing the various touch point of Fury. So when we say the touch points, so what are those touch points here? So if we look into this uh, slide, so uh, when running the SAP Business Suite systems, we must ensure that our data and processes support our business needs without allowing the unauthorized access to critical information. So the user errors, negligence or attempted manipulation of our systems must not result in the loss of data or information or it should not impact the processing time. So these security requirements apply equally to SAP Fury applications. If we begin uh, to look at this topic of security from a high level perspective, so what are the various touch points that we have in this context? So as we, uh, we notice here, so we are traversing at least three network layers here. So the internet or the public network where the devices or indeed our consumption model exist. That is the top layer wherein we have the mobile, we have the desktop. So this is my external environment from where my application is getting accessed. After that, we have the DMZ, this layer, the second layer, which is a DMZ layer. So after the DMZ, we have the server zone. So in this, we have our, our front-end server as well as our back-end server. So sometimes the server may be split into one or more DMZ layers, or they could consist of an inner DMZ or the outer DMZ. So there could also be some secure server zones that are in place. So as a thumb rule, we will consider at least four network layers in, the, in this. So now, each of these layers provide a touch point in our case and also provide some security aspects that need to be considered. So when a user launches an SAP Fiori application, the launch request is sent from the client to my ABAP front-end server and by the SAP Fiori launchpad. So during the launch, ABAP front-end server or the gateway server authenticates the user by using the authentication mechanism or the single sign-on mechanisms. And obviously this is not the, uh, so we have the different uh, authentication methods which are available here, that is the X509, SAML 2.0, logon tickets, Kerberos, a BAP security session. So this initial authentication is done here. So now this is not the complete list, but this is just a selection from that list. Now, after these, each of these parts has its own security concept that need to be considered. So there are many parts in this whole uh, Fury security architecture. So uh, now each of these parts has their own security concepts that need to be considered. So it doesn't mean that they all implement the security differently, but they all have different aspects of the security paradigm that are emphasized more in one context or in another. So basically the security has to be implemented at all the layers of it, but the, uh, the way we are implementing the security that can be different. Now let's move to the next slide. Now, if you uh, access the SAP Fury application from the corporate network, we can enable the Kerberos based authentication for the ABAP front-end server. So these are the basically the supported authentications which are there in my SAP Fury security. That is the Kerberos, we have X509 certificates, we have SAML2, and we have the logon tickets. So basically when our SAP Fury applications are accessed from our corporate network, then we prefer Kerberos. So this type of authentication is especially recommended if we already have the infrastructure in place. For example, if we are using the Microsoft Active Directory and are using Kerberos. So if we have implemented a public key infrastructure, 
for user authentication in our organization. In that case, we can use X509 certificates by configuring the required backend systems to accept these certificates. So both a BAP stack and the HANA stack support X509 certificates. Now, authentication with X509 certificates provides a few advantages like it does not require an issuing system during the logon, which means that in internet-facing scenarios, this really works well. It also support uh, uh, it is also supported for the logon using the SAP GUI. So, if we are using the SAP GUI and have HTTP access, then using the X509 certificates simplifies the maintenance and setup of your landscape. Of course, this X509 certificates in use means they must be distributed to the workstations or the handheld devices that are used to access the Fury applications. So basically, uh, these X509 certificates, so uh, we have to distribute these certificates to the workstations or the devices from where we are accessing the Fury applications. Then comes the SAML 2.0. So, if we have implemented the security assertion markup language, that is SAML version 2.0, as a method of SSO within our organization, we can configure the ABAP front-end server to use SAML 2.0 based authentication. And then we have the logon tickets. So, logon tickets, if we have a portal in place, then as a logon ticket issuing authority, we can use that or we can use the front-end server configured to be the provider of logon tickets within our landscape. So basically, the back-end systems must be enabled for consumption of these tickets. So um, basically, uh, when we look at the logon tickets, so we should have some system which is issuing these logon tickets. So we should have a portal or we should have the front-end server which will be issuing this logon ticket and then we are, our backend system must be enabled for consumption of these tickets. So these are the four uh, supported authentications and commonly used authentications for SAP Fury security. Now, uh, let's come to the security on the front end server. So we know that uh, the security uh, like the Fury comes up with the uh, different different touch points. So these touch point, one of the, these touch point is the front end server. So how the security on the front end server is maintained. So basically, uh, when the uh, security has to be done, uh, implemented at the front end server, we should secure the connection between the device and the front end server. And also we should secure the connection between the front end and the back end server. So these two uh, connections we have to make secure. Now, uh, now in the simplest format, the device, whether it's a desktop or the handheld device, will connect directly to the gateway. After that, if we implement the Fury transactional-based applications in an internal facing scenario, SAP recommends that we deploy the SAP Web Dispatcher in our DMZ. The web dispatcher should allow only the request that will be routed to the general internet communication framework services, that is my ICF services, or to the Fury apps that must be exposed. Let's say in the case of access, uh, access engine, that is the HANA access engine, the node which is SAP HBA and everything underneath that node should be blocked. Or in the case of an enterprise search, my node SAP ES and everything under that node should be blocked. So this is how uh, we maintain the security and implement the security on my front end. After that, uh, what is the SSO? So uh, SSO uh, is my single sign-on. Uh, now we will look like how we uh, do the single sign-on in a Fury applications. So to set up the connections between the web dispatcher and the ABAP servers, we must take the settings. We must have to do the following settings and not in any particular order. It means that we have to perform these settings, but the order can be any. So 
my HTTP security session management for the ABAP frontend server must be configured and we must configure the ABAP frontend server for supporting SSL. In addition, we can secure the communication between the backend server and the frontend server. So to ensure the confidentiality and the integrity of data, SAP recommends us protecting the HTTP connections using the transport layer security or the secure socket layer. So a token based protection against the cross site request forgery is active by default in SAP Gateway and HANA Access Fury OData services. So these services already have the security built in and it protects all modifying requests. Then we use the SNC for user authentication and single sign on when using SAP protocols like Dialog or RFC and the SAP GUI or Java. So Java is the front end. So when using the SAP protocols like Dialog or RFC and if we are using the GUI as front end, whether it's the Java based or Windows based, it doesn't matter. So my transport layer security is also provided when using the SNC. So we use the logon tickets for single sign on when accessing the internet protocols and a web browser as the front end client. Then we have the SSL and X509 certificates. So we use the SSL and X509 certificates for both user authentication as well as the single sign on. So these are the different methods which we can uh, implement for implementing the SSO. That is, we can either directly use the user ID and the password, we can use SNC, we can use logon tickets, and uh, lastly, we can also use SSL and X509 certificates. Now, now, what is the HTTPS for a service and SNC? Now, let's look into the detail of a SNC and HTTPS for a service. So, when using the internet protocols and a web browser as a front-end client, so in order to set up the HTTPS for Fury services, there are some supporting requirements that need to be met. So the SAP crypto, uh, libra uh, cryptographic library we have, so this library needs to be installed first. So uh, what does that mean is that we should have the cryptographic library already in place when implementing the SNC. So uh, like if I look at this, so when using the SAP crypto, uh, crypto library, sorry, the crypto library or the SAP crypto cryptographic library which is the official name is one of those requirement and this is the default security product which is delivered by SAP for performing encryption functions in our system. For example, we can use it to provide the SNC between the various SAP components, server components or for using SSL protocol with the ABAP stack. So the SSL server PSE contains the application server security information and it needs to communicate using SSL. If we have a system with the multiple application servers, then there are some additional options that apply. So we can use a single system wide SSL server PSC for all your servers or we can use a server, spe a server specific SSL server PSC for individual application servers or we can also use the combination of both. So we choose them whenever or like which is most relevant for our scenario. However, there exists a hard dependency to the cryptographic uh, library to be installed. Now my SNC integrates the sign, single sign-on or an external security product with my SAP systems. So with SNC, we strengthen the security by using the additional functions provided by a security provider product that are not directly available with the SAP systems. So my SNC protects the data communication paths between the various clients and between various client and server components. So there are well-known cryptographic algorithms that have been implemented by various security products and with SNC. So we can apply these algorithms to our data for increased protection. And with SNC, we can apply these algorithms to our data for 
increased protection and we can receive application level end-to-end -end security. So all the communication that takes place between the two protected components is secured. So these components can be uh, communication between the GUI and the application server. So we can use the additional features that SAP doesn't directly provide. For example, the smart cards when we have this enabled. So we can change the security product at any time without affecting the SAP business applications. So for as we can use the SNC and HTTPS for a service. And we should for uh, the basic requirement for this is that my cryptographic library has to be installed. After that, we have to set up the trust. We have to create the personal uh, security environment. We have to enable the SNC and we are securing an RFC connection with the SNC in this context. Now, what are the different levels of security? So there are three levels of security protection that we can apply. The first one is the authentication only, which means that when using the authentication only levels of protection, the system verifies the identity of the communication partners. So this is the minimum level of protection offered by SNC. So these are the three different levels of security which my SNC is providing to me. So after that we have the integrity uh, protection. So in my authentication only there is no actual data protection is provided. But when using the integrity protection the system detects any changes or manipulations of the data. So which may have occurred between the two endpoints of a communication. And when using the privacy protection the system encrypts the mess messages being transferred to make uh, like uh, anything dropping as a useless but privacy protection also includes the integrity protection of the data so this is the maximum level of protection which is provided by SNC so basically in my authentication only we don't have any data protection in integrity protection we have the data protection as well and in my privacy protection this is the maximum level of security which we have in the SNC now let's move further. 